When adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator, just keep the numerator and add the numerator. So in this case, we end up with 3 over 5, 3 fifths. When adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators, find the smallest number that is a multiple of both. That number is 15. Then divide 15 by 3, which gives you 5, and then multiply by 2. And divide 15 by 5, which gives you 3, and then you multiply by 4. And the rest is easy, right? This is 10, and this is 12. 10 plus 12 is 22 over 15. That is our answer. If one of the denominators is a multiple of the other, then we already have the smallest number that is a multiple of both. That number is 10. Proceed the same way as before. 10 divided by 5 is 2 times 2. 10 divided by 10 is 1 times 3. So we get 4 plus 3 is 7 over 10. If the denominators have algebraic expressions, but they happen to be equal, the same, then that is our common denominator, x plus 1. And then you just, this is supposed to be plus, uh, you add 2 plus 3, which is 5, and you end up with 5 over x plus 1. If the two denominators are algebraic expressions that are not the same, what we want is the same as before. We would like to have in here the smallest expression that is a multiple of both. Now, x plus 1 is not equal to x plus 2 times some number. In other words, x plus 1 is not a multiple of x plus 2. Similarly, x plus 2 is not equal to x plus 1 times some other number. In other words, x plus 2 is not a multiple of x plus 1. So, we are in a situation similar to what we had here. 3 is not a multiple of 5, 5 is not a multiple of 3, so what did we do? Choose the product. 3 times 5, 15. So, we are going to do that. x plus 1, x plus 1, times x plus 2 as the common denominator, right? And then proceed the same as before. When you divide this by x plus 1, the x plus 1s are going to cancel, and you end up with x plus 2, which you multiply by 2. And when you divide this by this, the x plus 2s are going to cancel, and you end up with x plus 1, which you multiply by 3. And then the rest is just a matter of working this out, right? Which is going to be 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 1 is 3, over x plus 1 times x plus 2. And what do we have? 2x plus 3x is 5x. And 4 plus 3 is 7 over x plus 1 three, times x plus 2, which is a common denominator. And that's it. That's our answer. Another example. Let's say that you want to add 5, 6 plus 2 over 45. In this case, 6 is not a multiple of 45. 45 is not a multiple of 6. But if you take the product... 6 times 45, 6 times 45 gives you 270. Let me not write it there. Um, 6 times 45 gives you 270. So if you do something like this, something similar to what we did here, you are going to end up with numbers that are big, very big. If, if, you, if you do that, you can do it, but uh, it's going to give you very big numbers. 270. So you're going to have to divide 270 by 6 and then multiply by 5, 270 by 45 and then multiply by 2. That's not a good choice. We're not going to do that. Now, let me explain in order to tell you how to do this. 
uh, what uh, are prime numbers? Prime numbers um, are numbers that have exactly two divisors. So one is not a prime number. Two is a prime number because it has two divisors, which are two and one. One has only one divisor, which is one. Three is a prime number. Four is not a prime number because it has three divisors, four, two, and one. Five is prime, six is not prime, seven is prime, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Why I'm explaining what prime numbers are? Because what we want to do is this. What we want to do is factor six as a product of prime numbers. The smallest prime number is two. Can I divide six by two? Yes, I can. Six divided by two is three. Can I divide three by two? No, but I can divide three by three. Um, and that gives me one. When I get to one, I stop. I just found that six is equal to two times three, the product of these two prime numbers. We do the same thing with 45, okay? Um, I'm going to try to divide. Can I divide 45 by two? No because the only numbers that are divisible by two are even numbers. Can I divide it by three? Yes, I can. How do I know? If the sum of both digits is a multiple of three, the number is divisible by three. Five plus four is nine, nine is a multiple of three. Okay, perfect. Can I divide 45 by three? Yes, and I get 15. And uh, I'm not gonna try by two because before it wasn't divisible by two, so it's not gonna be divisible by two again. Can I divide by three? Five plus one is six, which is a multiple of three. Yeah, I can divide by three. 15 divided by three is five, and five is only divisible by five, by five and it gives me one. So I just found that 45 is equal to three squared times five. Okay, and the number that I am looking for there would be, uh, what I'm going to do is take, looking at this prime number factorization, I'm going to take all factors with the largest exponent. Two is only there, so I'm going to take uh, two, okay? Three is here and three squared, so I'm going to take the three squared. And 5 is there, so I'm going to take 5 only. So I take them all factors, um, common or not, but with the largest exponent. So what is this? 2 times 3 squared times uh, 5. If you do that, that is going to give you 90. Much more reasonable than 270. Okay, let me see if I can squeeze the rest of this example in this page. Let me erase this. So the number that I'm going to have here as a common denominator is this, 90. When I divide 90 by 6, what I get is 15, and I'm going to multiply 15 by 5. And when I divide 90 by 45, I get 2. And 2, I multiply by 2 and take it from there. Another example, what we have here are two fractions where the denominators are polynomials that have been factored. These, fa these two factors and these two factors. But we don't need to take the product of this times that because we have x plus 2 here and x plus 2 there. We don't have to take it twice. So our common denominator is going to be x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. We don't need to take the x plus 2 again. And then when we divide all of this by this, what we are going to be left with is x plus 3, that we are going to multiply by 2. And when we divide this by that, we are going to be left with x plus 1, which we multiply by 3. And we take it from there again. In this example, the polynomials have not been factored, so that's the first thing we should do. So, can you think of two numbers that multiplied give you 6 and added give you 5? Yep, 
3 and 2, right? x plus 2 times x plus 3. The product is going to give you 6, and the sum is going to give you 5. Okay, now, for the other one, can you think of two numbers that multiply, give you 4, and add it, give you 4? Sure, x plus 2 and x plus 2, right? 2 and 2. In other words, x plus 2 squared, right? So I'm going to write it as x plus 2 squared. And the numerator is 3. Okay? Now, we are going to do something similar to what we did here, where we factored the first denominator, factored the second denominator, and we took all factors with the highest exponent. So we took 2, and we don't take this 3 and that 3 squared. We take just 3 squared and 5. So the common denominator turned out to be 2 times 3 squared times 5. So here it's going to be similar. Okay. I'm going to take, I have x plus 2 and I have x plus 2 squared. So I'm going to take x plus 2 squared. And I take x plus 3 also. Okay. And when I divide this by this, I'm going to be left with 1x plus 2. And we get x plus 2 only. Right? Multiplied by 2. And when I divide this by that, the x plus 2 squares cancel, and we are left with x plus 3, that we multiply by 3, and we take it from there. Okay, one last example. Let's see how we do this. Okay, so what we have here is a fraction that is more complex than the ones that we have found before. You probably have heard the expression divide and conquer, which means if you divide your enemy, it doesn't look so threatening. So don't look at the whole fraction. Look at this fraction, only, this expression. So how do we add this to? What would be the common denominator between x plus 1 and 1? The common denominator is x plus 1. And then I divide x plus 1 by 1, which gives me x plus 1, and I multiply it by 1. And now x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 gives me 1, and I multiply it by 2. And do the same thing here. What would be the um, common denominator between x minus 1 and 1? It's going to be x minus 1. Divide x minus 1 by 1, you get x minus 1, and you multiply it by 1. Divide x minus 1 by x minus 1, gives you 1, and you multiply it by 3. Okay, so let's uh, do this. What would this be? I still have x plus 1 as a common denominator here at the top. So this is going to be x plus 1 plus 2. So it's going to give me x plus 3. And in the denominator, I have x minus 1. And what I'm going to have here is x minus 1 minus 3, which is x minus 4. Now, how do we divide fractions easily? We take a fraction on the top, which is x plus 3 over x plus 1, and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is x minus 1 over x minus 4. So you flip this one upside down. And from, that, from this point on, it's a piece of cake, because the only thing you have to do is multiply x plus 3 times x minus 1, and the denominator is going to be x plus 1, times x minus 4. And there is nothing that we could cancel here, but the only from that point on, uh, it's a piece of cake. You only have to distribute here, and that's it. Learning to work with fractions like this is extremely important. You see people taking college algebra and then calculus 1 and calculus 2 and still struggling with this and hurting their grades. So learn this once and for all.